Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today I want to talk about examples of prayer in the scripture. There's so many in here, I'm just going to touch on a couple of them. But uh, I think it's just important to give this message to you. And I'm going to first start with the basic one that everybody knows. It's always recited at funerals, and that's uh, in the book of Psalms, chapter 23. I'm going to read it. Yahweh is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, the, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever. So that's the common one. That's the, that's the common common one here. Um, I want to go to other ones that you might not actually be fully aware of. You know, this is a uh, First Samuel. First Samuel in uh, chapter one. Hannah. Wanted a son really bad, terribly. She wanted one real bad to the point where she promised if she had a son, she would dedicate him to the temple. She would uh, give the baby over to the priest to be raised up as a priest. And his name was Samuel, one of the greatest judges slash prophets in the Old Testament. Now, the chapter one. says, uh, she, uh, says, uh, she was mistakenly, uh, mistaken for being drunk. She was, she was, uh, she was, she was, uh, because she was praying. She prayed, you know, constantly. She prayed to Yahweh. She promised him this and that. She, she wanted to child so bad and her husband and others thought she was drunk and she wasn't she's you know might have been fanatical what she did but she did what she did she prayed and of course she had she had samuel and that didn't stop there after she had the child she kept her promise handed the baby over but in uh chapter 2 1 through 11 she thanks she thanks Yahweh. She praises him. Thanks and praises him for doing what she what she asked. You know, I'll read that. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in Yahweh. My horn shall exalt in Yahweh. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in the salvation. There is none holy as Yahweh, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our Elohim. Talk no more so exceedingly proud. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For Yahweh is the L of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of my mighty men are broken, and they are stumbled, are girded with strength. That they were full, have hired out themselves for bread, and that they were hungry, hungry ceased. So that they, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she hath many children, is wax feeble. Yahweh killeth and maketh alive; he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Yahweh maketh poor and maketh rich; he bringeth low and lifteth up. He raise, raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes. And to make them inherit the throne of glory, for the pillars of the earth are Yahweh's. And he hath set the world upon them, and will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of Yahweh still be broken to pieces out of heaven, shall be thunder, shall he thunder upon them. Yahweh shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength upon his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. So 
basically this is also like also like a prophecy too you know but she, you know this is a prayer of thanks and you know and she's praising him so much but it's also turning into a prophecy now go to go to some others next one i want to go to uh first kings skip down to first kings here I'll be going to uh, oops, chapter eighteen. Ch yeah, chapter eighteen. Follow along if you have a Bible. Chapter eighteen, thirty-six, forty-six. Yeah, thirty-six, forty-six. This is Elijah. Elijah's prayer, and he was one of the greatest, powerful prophets of the Old Testament. This verse 36, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening, evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Yahweh, Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art Elohim of Israel, and I am thy servant, and I have done all things of thy word. Hear me, O Yahweh, hear me, that this people may know that thou art Yahweh, Elohim, and that thou hast turned the heart back again. This is when he was uh, on Mount Carmel. He was contesting and fighting against uh, 450 false prophets of Baal. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Then all the people saw it and fell on their faces and they said, Yahweh, he is our Elohim, Yahweh. He is the Elohim. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of the Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah, Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So he restored the rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and he said to the his servants go up now look toward the sea and he went up and looked and said there's nothing and he said go again seven times and they and it came to pass that the seven times that he said behold there rises a little cloud out of the sea like a man the man's hand and he said go up say to ahab prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop not thee not and it came to pass in the means while that the heavens were black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of Yahweh was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. So that's another example of prayer and prayers. You know, you got to have strong faith, and it's a ri righteous prayer. You know, like I said in the other episodes, it can't be. I pray for win the lottery or, you know, a, f a certain football team wins. <laughs> but uh, anyways, see, I go to, uh, and we'll go to Second Kings now for another example. And that's going to be uh, uh, six, chapters, chapter six, uh, 15 through 19. Yeah, 15 through 19. And this is uh, Elijah's successor. Elijah's successor, e Elijah. Now they were uh, they were having problems with the Syrians, the Syrian army, and the Syrians, the Syrians were coming down on them hard, and uh, the people were afraid, terrified, because it was a great army, strong and great and terrifying. Now I'm going to read this to you. And when the servant of the man of Elohim was risen early and gone forth. Behold, a host encompassed the city, both with horses and chariots. His servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. They that be with us are more, that they that be with them. That was what Elijah said. And Elijah prayed and said, Yahweh, I pray upon, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man, 
And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. And when he came down to him, Elijah prayed to Yahweh and said, Smite the people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elijah. And Elijah said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria, so he took them away. You know, they struck him blind. <coughs> he led them away. He led them away, took them to Samaria. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so, then we go to Judges now. I'm going to jump back to Judges here. Uh, and you, you're familiar you're familiar with this story, I'm sure of it. Uh, judges 16. Don't be going to Judges 16. So get, have your Bible handy and check up on me. 16, 27 to 30. Uh, yeah, 27 to 30. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Sorry. Now this is the story of Samson, strong man. This is this is his this is his his story here. Now, now the house was full of men and women, and all the masters of Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson was sport. So Samson, when he was captured, his hair was cut and his eyes were gouged out. They wanted to make a sport of him, so they had him in a building with all these Philistines. And they, you know, of course they were celebrating, you know, their victory over the strong man. And, so, and Samson called upon Yahweh and said, Oh, my sovereign Yahweh, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O Elohim, that I might be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the masters and upon the people that there were therein. So the dead which they slew at his death were, were more than they which he slew in his life. So he killed more people in that last stroke than he did in his entire life. And he killed a lot of, a lot of people back then. You know, he wasn't, you know... I guess he says he's a controversial judge back then. <laughs> but uh, now we'll, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. Uh, uh, I think I want to start with Luke. Luke, Luke 11. Luke 11, where are you at? Ooh, doo, doo, doo. Luke 11, I'm going to start with uh, verse 1, or yeah, verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Master, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so as in earth. Give us, give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every man that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So, that was a, little snippet of of Yeshua you know teaching his disciples how to pray they they wanted to learn know how to pray right you know they they wanted to they don't want no stones you know unturned you know <laughs> it's like but they just that's what they wanted um uh, let's go to go to uh Matthew 11 let's see, get another one here Matthew, Matthew 11, Matthew 11, what's that, Matthew 11, 25, 30, 
Matthew 25 through 30. Matthew 25 through 30. At that time, Yeshua answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, ruler of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of the Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he who whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all that you labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and low, lowly in heart, and shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, see. Try to go to another one here. Let's go to Matthew 6. Skip back a little bit. Matthew 6 and uh, 5, chat, uh, verse 5. This will be 5 through 15. That's where you at. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues, and in the corners of the streets that they are seen of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet or hidden spot to be alone. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in the secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions such as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Don't be babbling, is what what said. Don't be babbling. You know, get to the point and let it come from the heart, come from the spirit. Be not you there of like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need need of before you ask. So the father already knows what you need. He just wants you to ask, you know. You know, he wants he wants uh, communication. He wants to be acknowledged. After this manner, therefore, pray, you, O Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy shall be done, as in earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power of the glory forever. Amen. So if you, and 14 here says, For if, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And verse 15 right here. But if you, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. So <laughs> that's something to consider and think about. Matthew, we got time for one more? Yeah. I'm going to go to John. I'm going to jump over to John real quick. John. And I'm going to go to uh, chapter 17. John 17. Verse. Verse 1. 1 through 26. And this is Yeshua's prayer. These words spoke Yeshua and lifted up his eyes into heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son shall also be glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is the life eternal that they might know thee, the only true Messiah and Yeshua Messiah whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. And now, Father, glorify thou me with uh, thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the earth was. Before the earth was. He wants it's like glorified because before he was human, you know, he was he was uh, Elohim. He was, you know, with Yahweh. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world thine 
they wore, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever shall be given unto me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst these send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which are given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and all thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come of thee, Holy Father, keep to thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that were gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. He's talking about Judas right there, the betrayer. And, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak unto the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they, hey, they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. <clears throat> I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil, or the evil one too. They are not of the world, even as I am not of this world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me unto the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which that shall believe on me through their word. Talking about the future generations of uh, messianics and believers. That they are, that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may desire that thou has sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. I and them, and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in the one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and thou hast loved me, has loved them, as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me, with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Which thou, which thou hast given me, for the lovest me before the foundations of the world. And righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them by the name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. So. That was a, it's a long prayer, but Yeshua, he prayed a lot. He prayed a lot. He he prayed for strength sometimes, but he also praised his father. He prayed our father. He he praised him. So those were examples of prayers. And um, there's more in there. If you, you study the scriptures, it's like the one I said about Hezekiah, you know, praying for a longer life. That's, that's another one. But uh, I just wanted to share some of these examples of prayers to you, the, the faith that these people had, you know, and how, how their prayers were answered and and uh, how the importance of that communication, you know, through Yeshua to, to the Father, you know, from us. Yeah, sure, the Father, He knows what we need. He knows our needs. But, you know, He just wants to hear us and He wants that direct line of communication, you know. So, that's all I've got to say about that, and I thank you again for tuning in. Please like my channel, hit the notification bell, subscribe, comment below, and um, share with everybody you can these videos. Thank you again.
And with that said and done, peace out and shalom.